Welcome to the Greenway Outdoors podcast, your trusted source for outdoor information and entertainment. The Greenway Outdoors is also an internationally syndicated TV show and conservation advocate aimed at bringing millennials and Generation Z into the outdoors. Welcome to the Greenway Outdoors. The Greenway Outdoors is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve Motor Trends Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. And by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Hello and welcome to episode 63 of the Greenway Outdoors podcast. I'm Kyle Green. I'm AJ. I'm Jeff. I'm Ryan. No one does the last names, it's just me. Yep. Well, I guess when people wonder why we created the name Greenway Outdoors. No one wonders. I'm not no. a follower. Yeah, anyhow. <laughs> 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 I'm not a follower. <laughs> Never um, heard of it. Normally, I like to start out with like a really good story, something to really kick things off and be super entertaining, but uh, we don't have that today. So All right, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that today, so Jeff, go ahead. How was everyone's Father's Day weekend? Good. You mean Never birthday weekend? Yeah, it's technically Ryan's Yeah, make birthday. it about yourself. That's great. It was this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Hey, better birthday than a Father's Day for you, right, Ryan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, uh, there's no problem with his dad. We're just saying. <laughs> what, what, what happened to his dad? <laughs> I know, we're just saying there was, that there was no premarital. Uh, anyhow, go ahead, Jeff. Well, I went to my uncle's house. Had a nice little family. <laughs> <laughs> we have a guest in the in the podcast room today. His name's Inyo. Now, Inyo is AJ's dog. Cutest little guy you ever saw. If you're looking at the overhead shot, you can probably see him. He's a, a um he. He's got this thing where he doesn't know his back leg is his back leg. <laughs> so when he scratches himself, he growls pretty aggressively. He doesn't do I it that often. I just didn't like my story. <laughs> yeah. Well, He's no like, one, boo. No one no does. One's gonna, but. Yeah. <laughs> They'll never see him because they already clicked off once I said you were up. But anyhow, go ahead. Um, so I went to my uncle's for a nice little family get together. I get there. He says, okay, take your shoes off and then go in the house, <laughs> but bring your shoes with you. Because we're hanging out in the backyard. Shoes, shoes. Okay, so I guess I'll. So he doesn't know that you've got terrible. So, no, no. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I go. I'm like, what? What's the deal? He goes, well, you don't want to track it in, and then once you get out there, you don't want to be in barefoot in the backyard. Oh Why? my gosh! Oh, the Rona? gypsy moths. Oh, he had a reason. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I'm like, <laughs> doesn't so sound there's like just, a good one. But so there's reason. just like there's just moths everywhere. He goes, no, it's the caterpillars before they become the moths. They're an invasive species. They defoliated his entire backyard. There's not one leaf. Oh. And he's got six acres. <laughs> and it's bare. And they're not butterflies. They're just moths. Yeah. Are they cool looking moths? Nope. Oh, they just, they <laughs> just, just suck. Regular little brown, whitish moths. What is their like purpose? And they, they go up in the trees, they eat the leaves, and then they poop. And this is why he said, take your shoes off. The day before to prep for us coming over, he shoveled the driveway. Shut up. Shoveled. He said there was about two inches on the whole driveway. Of just... Sh- <laughs> they they, <laughs> they climb up, they eat the leaves, and then they poop it, and it just rains down. The only way to get rid of them is to do uh, crop dusting. Okay. And yeah, they, I, the irony. <laughs> In the suburbs? They, you want to get rid of they, poop? You crop and they, dust. And they, <laughs> and they crop dust it with, um, with this... Uh, some kind of like fungus or bacteria or something that is on, that only affects them. We hope. Supposedly, no. it, it's apparently like not. It's else. not supposed to affect. They tested it on like bees and stuff, and he's it doesn't like, affect them. He's like, it's this really clean substance, really, really good quality. It's called Roundup. D D D D T. So yeah, these these invasive things come in. They eat all the leaves. And then, so I sit down in the backyard. They have a pool. I'm like, I don't know that I want to get in the pool. Is that some kind of soup? He goes, no, we clean it about every soup. like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I sit there, and he goes, you hear that? Hear what? That Sounds ain't. like rain. <laughs> the few leaves that are left, they're up there in the trees munching on what's like left of the carcass of the leaves and pooping, and it falls down like rain, and you hear it on the leaves. What? That are left. What are you talking about? It was a. He goes, look at the house. I look at the house. It's moving. <laughs> All the corners, they're everywhere. There's like ten wormholes. Hundreds of thousands of them. Why I do you don't, take pictures what of this? What city was this? It's nuts. It's uh, uh in uh, somewhere north. It's on Rochester Road somewhere. Up. Uh, Just a city, man. I, <laughs> I don't remember the name of the city. I'm sorry. 
He, um, he moved. It's in Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's in southeastern Michigan. Do you know where they're originally from? I've never heard no, of I, such I a thing. No, I don't know. But they, they, were, they were a big problem in like the 80s and 90s, I think. They said they defoliate, I think, a million acres a year. Wow. Yeah. Are they like slug looking and do no, they have like no they look like, like a little, the little hairy cat ha- okay. little caterpillars and then the front half is blue and the back half is red so okay. when we go up north up to elisa's cottage um when we're up there the the kids her little cousin little ec and little ellie they're on like this bug kick we had ellie's little birthday party up there and she had a bugged a bug finding birthday party and that's <laughs> like we all went around and found bugs and stuff and uh um we found a quite a few of those gypsy moths and john's like i just their dad's like i already sprayed for them and they're just you just can't they're just always around gypsy but, moths. but the girls get so pumped about finding a caterpillar like you don't have the the nerve to tell them but and god knows every bug they find ain't gonna live to see tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> you know because they're like poking in they're like, like, the, like the kid with the new fish in the bag <laughs> shaking the bag yeah they're all excited so you know it's not gonna make it but yeah those gypsy moths are a big issue i've never heard you know the perfect storm that he just he described. Yeah, they oh like they, they they I guess gather in small pockets and just Don't and notice. then and then they lay their egg sacs on trees and on the house and everywhere and you can't just like spray them with something. You have to take a spoon, scoop the egg sac off of wherever Come it is, on. and put it in hot soapy water in order to kill them. If you scoop it and throw it on the ground, they will just birth from that spot the following spring. I'd like to know. So is that it? Is it's it? a seller's market right now. <laughs> so you could technically sell that house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is it like his house only, or is it like surrounding area, or? Yeah, is he just the oh, gross house? It's, like it's, everyone no, hates it's, him. No, it's it's the area. Okay. There's, okay. Because it's a pretty wooded area. Like I said, he's on six acres. So. So what happens when they eat all the leaves? Do they all just die off, and then they wait no, for the next batch? They've, they've then respawned and move on. So it's like locusts. Yep. They said the trees will most likely rebud and be fine, but this it was a sad-looking skyline. Uh, <laughs> that sucks. Man. A sad-looking skyline. And that was – they, they, they're, like, getting ready to retire. This was their dream house. They're so excited. It's got a pool, and then they move in. Everything's great because they move in in the fall when there aren't <laughs> gypsy month problems. And then, yeah. That's no. never underestimate nature. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my aunt's seeing us off as we leave, and she finds the first thing she can grab, which is a gas can, and starts smushing them while they're on the, the driveway just to get, like, that little bit of satisfaction. Like, you, yeah. you, jer- not you jerks, get out of here. And I'm like, oh, God, she grabbed the gas can. Right? <laughs> <laughs> She's had enough. <laughs> That's rough. That is rough. So we had a terribly traumatic experience happen in our family. Elizabeth witnessed a death. It was awful, and she was crying. Okay. Uh, she, so she was driving. Gypsy moth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's stepping on him. No, she was she was driving to work, and she was going up this hill, and a truck started coming down this hill, and a doe. Ran. Oh, I was like, she didn't die, did she? <laughs> no, she's good. A doe ran out in front of this truck. The doe just cleared the truck. However, a little Bambi did not. Oh no. Yeah, and so Come she witnessed on. the whole thing. And she just Did it at least die quick? No. Oh God. I'm a yama, I'm a, I'm a yama. <laughs> <laughs> Was it yelping? Oh, okay, so <laughs> everyone everyone who witnessed this thing stops. Is, is it yelping? <laughs> yeah, it's well, a, it's just like his half his body. No, I gobbled. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone stops. Elizabeth sees this thing happening. Jeez. And then it's it's like guts are like hanging out. It was it was a rough sight, I guess. Oh, okay. And the guy gets out of his truck and he's all upset. He's like stupid deer, blah blah blah. Yeah. And then Liz was just watched, sitting mortified, because it's laying in the road, blood's coming out of it, guts is are hanging out. And then and then the mom runs off and the baby notices that and it's in pain, so it starts going. Ah, 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 ah. Oh <laughs> and my It's like God. smashing its head on the trying concrete, to, trying to walk. It's cutting half. <laughs> yep. Oh. So. That's she, rough. she started crying, and poor Biz. Yeah, I well, I asked too. I was like, was anyone there to like put it down or what? Because you're not calling the police if it's she's like, I ha- no, no. <laughs> she's like, I'm not. I I actually had to hop it. <laughs> I'm like, what? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I got the I got the gad out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I think it just ended up dying, and it was relatively quick. The quickest death it'll ever have. If it had lived to die in the wild, wow. it, I think it was like five to ten minutes it, it took. Because no, no one really wanted to put it down. 
Oh, that is. But oh. I, she was saying how big it was, and it seemed like this dough had just dropped, just yeah. dropped that fawn. In Michigan, uh, late May, early June are when the fawns are dropping. Matter of fact, when we go brook trout fishing, that's kind of the best time to go brook trout fishing too. Is in the be- beginning of summer, and you see uh, it's very common to run into fawns out there. When you see them drop, you're not supposed to touch them. You're supposed to just leave them because the mom's nearby. Yeah, and they're like defense mode is the fawn knows to lay down and hold still and don't move and then the doe knows to run away and it's almost like a diversion so she knows that like i'm trying to create a diversion by running away so you'll follow me yeah and the fawn will stay still you'll follow me to try and pursue me and then she'll circle back to get them later uh people say that if you touch them like that then she's like oh you're, you're you're not mine you know you're dead to me I, I I don't think that's really a thing. I, well, you probably shouldn't touch them regardless, but if, if it happens, yeah. Uh, I've kissed a couple, and I've never. They do this, uh, obviously, most animals do it, where they eat the the offspring's placenta. Yeah, and does mm-hmm. do that, too. It's, a, it's commonly thought of as another defense thing. Supposedly, there's some nutritional value in there, too, because they're like pigs and things like that will do it just for, like, the nutritional value. Yeah. But in this case, it's actually another defense. So mm-hmm. um, imagine you're a doe and you're in the n- northern Michigan woods and you lay a fawn and now you're like, great, coyotes and bears and all these different things oh that could be, pursuing, nice. yeah, could be pursuing us. So they'll eat all the afterbirth. Mm-hmm. Nice. Lick it dry all, like a dirty dog <laughs> off the ground, like just <laughs> sucking it up every little Chewing on leather. <laughs> yeah, just – just going to town on it, but they'll eat the, and they'll clean clean the dough up good too, licking all the afterbirth and stuff off because that afterbirth is like a red flag to all coyotes. If they stumble upon that scent, like, they're going to be able to track God. you down Easy relatively. Here. Yeah. yeah. Ha- wow. it, if you ever have a kid, do you think you'll eat your kid's placenta? Oh, that's tough. I mean, I haven't spent. What do you well, mean that's tough? I, like, like you wouldn't do it. I. Is this a thing that we're we're discussing right it's now? A, it's a real yeah. thing. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah, I've, I've been asked this a couple times. Yeah. And the only times I ever think about it are when I'm being asked. And yeah, it doesn't. I, come I up. don't think I could spend less time thinking about it happening. But so, <laughs> so are you, you only, wouldn't. Do, you would you or you would only, you or wouldn't you? Are you only debating it because like people have asked, and it's a thing that other people are thinking about? Like yeah, they powderize yeah. it. Why? They people powderize do it. it into a pill for. Yeah. Well, turns out there's a few reasons. It, it's more love to hear them. Yeah. There, there's actually more purpose to it for the female that's had the child versus the male. I guess there's some data yeah. to go along with the fact that it helps with um, postpartum depression. You get like a few of your nutrients back after you've had the child. My first thought was like, it, you know, like the stem cell stuff and how it's probably, but it goes through your stomach, so that would ruin. Yeah, most of that. I, <laughs> and, but the CDC yeah. says don't do it because I guess there was a case, one case where a mom, there was strep in the placenta, and then they turned it into the pill form. The mom ate it, and then when she was breastfeeding the child, then the kid got strep. Got him. Yeah. What in the world? But the, the kid ball. was in the placenta, so wouldn't you think it would already have gotten? I don't know. I don't know how that works. Huh. But what a weird. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'm how not, did we get here? After, after, <laughs> I've actually, I've it's, actually it's heard, not a bad. I've actually heard of people doing it. They, yeah. Uh, what they'll do, it, they, they believe it has nutritional value. Mm-hmm. So there, there's companies that will take the placenta, and it's like an option that you can be like at the hospital, like when you're ordering up your uh, thing. All right, I'll get the epidural. Yeah, yeah, why don't you powderize that for me? I'll take it in pill form. I'll take that. Put yeah, it on it, my tab. They'll literally take it, send it somewhere. Can you get that in fruity cereal flavor? <laughs> yeah. They make it into, they like powderize it and put it into a pill and then people take it like a supplement. I've always huh. thought it was, I, mind you, I've I not I broke it in my sister's after she had that kid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's oh. so disgusting, dude. I, I, I didn't sell, really do that. Sells for $80 an ounce. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, we uh, funded the podcast room. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, I haven't done a lot of research on it, and before I knew it was like a thing that some moms do. But after reading about it, if there's like some information that helps with the fact that moms don't have postpartum after taking it, or it helps in some way, I'm not totally against it. Have, hmm. Yeah, I wonder if any of the fathers have have done it because you postpartum. Hate the- I, I sense a placebo effect. Maybe out, out the but if it works, no, no, it's, it's placenta. No. <laughs> <laughs> That placenta's got a placebo effect. Actually, eating it 
eating the placenta is it's a word i can't really pronounce it's like placenta fagi placenta placentalingus placenta fagi Something like that. Yeah, that went over Jeff's head. What yeah. is that? Good. I hope it went over everyone's head. <laughs> um, I what about? <laughs> it's still happening. What about the umbilical cord? You gonna gnaw that off, or are you gonna cut it with scissors? Mm-mm. Put it in soup. It's make, like, no, it's jerky. No, it's like this. You know, like the 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 tubey uh, popsicles you'd always have in the summertime when you were a kid. It's like that. You put the end of the umbilical that. cord and go. <laughs> Not intestinal line. <laughs> Stamp yes, it is. You can use it as a straw, it but only is. for like a week. After a week, it gets gross, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, what is going on? <laughs> okay. Well, anyhow, so um, eating placenta, I, 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 if there was any actual evidence that it was beneficial, I'd be interested, but I, I think it's probably just. Yeah, I'd have to have a lot more information on it before I was okay with it. The same people that do that like won't eat meat. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 But well, it's, it's natural. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we got that new Traeger, though. You know, so if you, like, wanted to cook it. Oh, can you yeah. Imagine, can you imagine, though, if you could paint the perfect scene? You're out, sta- you're out there on your Traeger, and the same neighbor that comes over to us every day, what time's dinner? You know, when we're cooking. <laughs> we're having placenta wrapped <laughs> steaks. <laughs> and you're like, man, if you're hungry now, we're all set. You open up the grill, and he oh, looks man. at it, and he goes, what's that? that? Then a, then a blob of ooze? What is, that? <laughs> what is that? We having squid for dinner? I didn't know you cooked squid on the grill. Okay, I think we better move on. So a story that I came across actually from our good friend Keenan Crow at Outdoor Hub. So Keenan is Kellen, who does a lot of our PR work. Um, mm-hmm. It's his brother. And he did a story that he uh, – and I want to give him a shout-out because it's, it's his story, and I found it really fascinating. And the due diligence that he must have done – to cover this was pretty intense. So it's about Yellowstone's oldest bear. Um, and he was 34, year, uh, 34 years old, and they first tagged him back in 1989. And at that time, he was only, what, Ryan, was it three years old? Uh, I think he may have been five okay. years old. Yeah, it was three. But go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad you read it. <laughs> he, he'd been captured a, a, a qu- quite a few times, though. Okay. They, they'd kept checking in with him a whole bunch. So you um, did a ton of research on it. What did you find from Keenan's story? <laughs> Tell us the story verbatim. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. So, I mean, there was this bear that was was born in the Reagan administration way back in the day. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. captured— The actor? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Back to the president? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they captured him, and they put a number on the inside of his lip. So a lot with a lot of the grizzlies, after they capture him, they'll tattoo him on the inside of the lip and number him. A lot, a of, cool, ga- cool lot, tattoo. Of, lot of gangs do that. I, I, he Gives w- him a lot of woods cred. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So this this grizzly's name was Grizzly 168. Oh. And I thought it was going to be a playoff Grizzly <laughs> Adams or something. No. I'm no, kind of bummed. <laughs> every grizzly gets a number, and their name is grizzly whatever number. Yeah. So most grizzlies that are caught now in that area are range from the the six to eight hundreds number, and this is okay. one thir- one sixty eight. You can imagine they're not like tagging every grizzly bear walking. That's like yeah. So they're 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 seeing numbers when they pull stuff up. They're seeing like eight hundred, seven fifty, seven twenty two. And then they're like, 160, what is it, 164? 168. 168? They're like, where'd this guy come from? So yeah. they've only done 700 in the last 30-some no, no, there's, years. There's, there's over 900, I believe. Yeah, yeah. no, it goes into, the like I think, the okay. thousands. Yeah. Like, it's getting into the thousands. So there's been okay. plenty, but the yeah. average that they catch, that, that they re-catch, yeah. or re-trap It's only like are, 30 or so a year. Yeah, so that's pretty. That's pretty good. I mean, it's not that big of an area if you're yeah. thinking about it. Anyways. Jeff went to college. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. They, like like you said, they were fascinated by the age of this thing that they were calling other people and asking, like, what what's the oldest a grizzly bear lives? Because they just didn't believe it. Who, who knew? Right. It, it hadn't been documented before. Right. And along with that, this poor bear was down, it weighed 170 pounds, which is extremely oh. light for a grizzly bear. Yeah. And he had three teeth. Oh, Three teeth that looked like um, three of them. <laughs> they, lo- they looked like it, if you put like kidney stones in someone's mouth. Come on. Yeah. I don't off. think that's true. Do you know what kidney stones look like? I mean, imagine yeah, like I a two. Th- they they like no, they look like uh, uh, they got they look like a porcupine rolled up in a ball. Is that what they look like? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you look at them microscopically. Oh, okay. Well, if you look at them with your eyeball. Okay. Do they well. look round? I don't know. I you eat them so <laughs> fast. I it's hard to know. <laughs> 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 I would assume jagged. This episode is brought to you by <laughs> Gross Supplements. <laughs> <laughs> Any okay, so anyways, it looked like like 
gnarly. Gnarly, like... He was all gummed up. We get it. Yeah. Gummy yellow golf balls in his mouth. Three yeah. of them. I think there was one up top and two on the bottom. And they had found carcasses of the things that this grizzly has killed. And the way he has to kill things, because he can't actually puncture it, he just cr- crushes it to death. Oh. Yeah. He literally gums him. Yeah. He, they, they, it's they, like they, an octopus beak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Octopus beaks, that's how they, they crack like shells yeah. and stuff oh open. Yes. Read a book. <laughs> <laughs> Obvious. It's yes. just like an octopus beak. So that they would skin up these animals that he's caught and just like there was rarely ever actual punctures. It would just be it like mush. That like, sucks. Because yeah. nothing death. else with a, a beak that's readily available comes to mind. Really? I mean, it's so hard to shop for you for your birthday. <laughs> for him? One blender and you make his <laughs> you make his gear. You know what I mean? He's yeah. so he, he tired need, of soup. <laughs> he, needs a bl- <laughs> <laughs> he probably I bet he ate more organ meat. Yeah, I would guess. I, I mean, would. Well, I would. I, it'd be. I would guess it's really hard to tear things, getting that like outside hide off of things, killing stuff too. I, they got their paw. Yeah, he's probably his claws yeah, were probably what bonkers. Are those, what do those look like? Yeah, I, I mean those regrow. But wasn't he eating like? Livestock that was part of the like why they yeah, discovered he was, him. I think he was getting into some sheep okay. and stuff like that. So they he was kind of becoming a problem. He was just going for easy meals, which makes sense. Poor guy has three teeth. Or he got smart. Depends I wonder. That, yeah. Depends yeah. on you have thirty more years. Yeah. I'd be interested to follow him around and see if he like adapted and uses his paws more than a normal bear. I'm sure he'd like have to how that his tendencies that plays out. Like the difference be between him and like a three year old would be astronomical yeah. as far yeah. as knowledge it's like raccoons you watch them do stuff and you'd swear they have thumbs yeah they yeah. don't but it's about as close as they'll get yeah <laughs> they don't. The, they the, don't. the unfortunate thing is the last time they had trapped him they put him down because oh. yeah he was he's be- no more yep he's no more why, he, why well when i first read that they had put him down it kind of bothered me a little bit like the guy had made it this far he's doing fine just like let him do his thing yeah. come on but he he was becoming a problem, and it, they felt like ethically it was the right thing to do because of his condition. Oh, it's like euthanasia. Yeah. He's like, mm. put the IV in. Yeah, basically. When they caught him when he was five, he was between five to 600 pounds. Wow. I when hope they, they gave him a last When meal. they caught him this last time, he was 170. Jeez. Yeah. So he was very— I agree with that last meal part. Yeah. yeah. You know? Like take him to Burger King or well, something. Well, now it's yeah. probably good that they didn't give him a name. Cause then, then make it harder to like. Oh, there goes Grizzly One Sixty Eight. Not like, oh no, oh Eugene, you got him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're probably pretty upset still, Eugene. Joe. Yeah. yeah. So Be- cool, but a little bit of a sad story. But hmm. usually nature ends sad. Well, I've got yeah. a different one. The gray wolf in Colorado. So this is something that came to Michigan years ago. And this is actually backtracking a little bit. This is why we don't have dove hunting in Michigan. Whenever you take decision making away from the department of natural resources you put yourself in a position where the decisions made are no longer based on science okay and the problem is sometimes the department of natural resources makes decisions not based on science as it is so then you have trouble trusting them now when the dove proposition came to michigan when it was being voted on they put it out to the general public hey do you think people here should have the opportunity to dove hunt? The problem is, in an election, this was during the Obama election, I believe. I don't remember. It was. It was pretty it was early wh- on. Yeah, it was a while ago. Um, I could be wrong, but in a in a state that typically swings left, sometimes we swing right, but some normally we swing left. We needed fifty one percent of people to be like yes on dove hunting, and the odds <laughs> of that are just. <laughs> Just not good. So when it was voted, I want to say it was in the low 20s. Really? We got the yes vote on it. Now, here's the problem with that. There's a sustainable population of doves in Michigan, very big one, easily could be hunted. And doves are the number one harvested game bird or a game in general across all of North America. Yet in Michigan, we can't hunt them simply because they put it up to a public vote. That means you're deciding what to do with natural resources owned by the people not based on sound science. Instead, it's based on feelings and emotions, and we know how those right. things run rampant. They're the bird of peace. Why would you do that? <clears throat> yeah. They're all white. Yeah. So yeah, They don't even know what the bird looks yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> so because of that, 
our jalapeno poppers today that we have for your uh, for your birthday dinner do not have dove meat in them because we weren't able to shoot them in Michigan. But the point is, when you're not making decisions based on science, you're just making it on opinion or um, feelings, then you're getting away from proper sustainability and proper conservation efforts. So in the case of Colorado, now Colorado is actually a very conservative state if you are outside the main city of Denver. Mm -hmm. um, once you get outside of Denver, it's very conservative. And actually, really, when you looked at a map of California, if you put where it's liberal and where it's conservative in color code, almost all of California would be red. It's just a very small areas, but condensed millions upon millions, millions of so people. So many people. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So the, the, city, the, the small cities speak for them. And in this case, in Colorado, um, it was called um, Proposition 114, and it was based on should we reintroduce wolves to Colorado, okay? And the idea behind it is, I mean, it's basically for nothing else than it would be like really nice to have wolves back to where they used to be. Now, in the 1940s, we exterminated them through hunting, trapping, and poison because they were competition to us. We needed food to eat. We needed elk to eat. We needed mule deer to eat. We needed um, whitetail to eat. We needed all these different animals to eat. We got rid of wolves for that reason. And given the fact that wolves in most er a lot of areas are now being taken off the endangered list, that changes how – when they were on the endangered list, they were managed by the Department of Natural Resources and the ideas that go to them. Once they were off there, it got put to the public vote. Now – most of the people in the Department of Natural Resources and in agriculture groups, as you can imagine, um, and different conservation organizations and hunting groups um, and the people in the outdoor industry there, which is the, the elk hunting alone in the state of Colorado, probably I think it was close to 25,000 jobs are created based off the elk hunting industry wow, in Colorado. I don't believe it. So they put it up to a public vote. Well, as you can imagine – the ranchers and all the people outside of the big city were like, no, 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 mm -hmm. no. This is the a ones bad idea. you actually idea. have to deal with the wolves? Oh, man. Yeah. Isn't that weird? The people that have it will have them in their backyard were against it. The people that are will never the see them yeah. will never see them are like, bring them back, yeah. baby. We want paws on the ground. That was how one of the articles and, named. And it's – imagine the cost for these ranchers. Yeah. When you're raising cattle like that, how, What your loss is going to be – Great if the, that population comes back well. Exactly, and wow. you, you can have them, but you release them downtown. Now here's yeah a, right. <laughs> I I I don't hate wolves, and if I got to see a wolf in nature, I'd be like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. But I also understand the fact that like there are a lot of people, and there are a lot of people that live off of game meat. I don't live in Colorado, but I can imagine if I was a rancher, I can imagine I got to hunt there this year. We harvested an elk there this past year. If they let those wolves go, and they're going to, they're going to reintroduce them, there's going to be, I mean, catastrophic numbers of they they kill and eat and kill and eat and kill and eat like you would not believe. Mm -hmm. And they're effective. Very oh, effective. Yeah. They're very talented. I mean, they, they can take down anything. So the issue now they're going to be releasing them. Um, it's by 2023 they have to have them, all, the whole thing done. So now they're identifying populations – um, of wild wolves that they can reintroduce there um, so that they can start building it out and they're picking the right locations to put them in um, and then hopefully re reinstating their native ranges. Um, I'm trying to not be biased on this like the way that I'm feeding the information and Ryan asked me not to be biased on this so that people could use it as just the information but on one side you have the game, the wild game industry, you've got the livestock industry, You've got the people whose livelihoods depend on wild game, their cattle, their sheep, their different things like that. And these you, are all people that feed the people in the cities. Yeah, sure. They don't think about where their food comes from. Oh, they from. have no mm -hmm. kind. Of, what do you mean? The meat comes from the, the package. The meat That's fairies where it, that drop it off yeah. at the grocery store. The <laughs> Listen fairies. to the unbiased guy over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, where we kind of stand on it is, you know, the amount of procedures that they're working on putting in place to deal with conflict, um, human conflict, such as, um, you know, how what happens when they kill a bunch of, uh, um, you know, cattle, what happens when they kill a bunch of sheep, the amount of dollars being spent to reintroduce wolves 
that like I don't care. It's a wild animal, and they don't care about you. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, but the amount of money spent to reintroduce them, the amount of money that'll have to be spent uh, protecting the farmers and the different you know organizations, the management plans that will have to go in place, all of these dollars that'll be spent, and you know they suck at spending money. Like their budgets are like our competitor, the main competitor of our show. You know, they have 34 people and spend, mil, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to produce one episode. Yeah. Imagine what these idiots will do when they've got millions to spend on this. They'll hemorrhage money and all to reintroduce a wolf that will kill a lot of the prized game. It, it will become an issue. It will. And 100%. then you're going to run in. It, it, it's like this every time. It be, they reintroduce them, becomes an issue, they get rid of them. They do it again and again and again. It's right. Like, What's not understood here? And I, I, I'm not at the point where I'm like, I hate wolves and I don't want wolves around. But given the fact that they're gone from there, it's like, man, it's like, I don't even know how to put it into an analogy. But like if someone says to me, they're like, hey, do you want to go bowling? I'm like, oh, I don't feel like bowling. But then once I get there, I have a good time and like deal with it. Like with the wolves, I don't, if they're not already there, then I'm not really interested in bringing them in. The ecosystem is adjusted. Right, we've it, adjusted it like we yeah. ha through hands-on conservation. Yes. So you're adding a massive variable, and it is going to cut down on the hunting success. It is going to cut down on the hunting. It's going to cut down on the sale of licenses. It's going to cu cut down on funding. Yet, so much money is going to be spent to yep. bring them in. And isn't there isn't there like a very small uh, population somewhere in the state? No. So uh, kind of, it's it's argued that there could be. So there was, I think it was, I want to say, two lone wolves. And uh, uh, a young one that were spotted in Colorado that likely came from another state. Oh, okay. And they're like, well, they're probably going to make their way here anyhow. So the reintroduction isn't necessary. And that's that's one of the arguments that um, uh, some of the people on the science space side are saying. They're like, they're probably going to get here on their own anyhow. We don't have to ramp it up. Right. So, Which I, I can get on board with that. If, yeah. they, if they naturally make their way there, let it happen until it becomes a problem. Yeah. Do some of these wolves potentially – go to the connecting states too i mean could they yeah they'll, they'll have a lot to kill in colorado though okay yeah. you know, they'll, i, I they'll... do wonder what the it'd be interesting to see the geography of the united states in that area and what would prevent them from moving yeah mountains and ranges and stuff yeah. like that make it okay. too difficult to go okay yeah. um the, th the thing that people that vote for stuff like this don't understand is that even if you take hunters out of the equation just people in general People have such a great impact, humans, on the environment that, like, we, we have to, because we use so many resources and we, we do so many things that are bad for the environment, we have to manage it. Right. Every species. We have to manage it to some degree. Otherwise, we're just only going to cause yeah. more harm right. than good. So, you know, let people look at the science, figure out how, you know, to the best of their ability instead of voting for things that you don't know what's going to happen. Right. Or that we know what's going to happen. We know it's going to end poorly. But, oh, because they look like dogs. Oh. Well, the, the best bet you That's can do big selling point. is go, you know, um, Ted Nugent always says, he's like, call your governor, call your mayor, call your local officials. But also, you know, every if you hunt and fish, you receive a survey from the Department of Natural Resources. Fill out the survey. Reach out to them. Hold your Department of Natural Resources accountable so they're yeah. making good decisions Put the right people in those places to make those decisions. Make your voice heard. Hold them accountable. Buy your fishing license and hunting license. Do the right things. Support conservation organizations. And then make sure that those people are in the right place. And then leave it up to science. Leave it up to them making those smart decisions as opposed to, I mean, the we can't hunt doves because it hurts people's feelings when we have a sustainable dove population. They're a game bird. They're great eating. More people are harvest doves across the country than anywhere else. If I go to the if I go to the store at um, you know Bass Pro Shop here in Michigan and I pick up a box of ammo and it's you know seven and a half shot, it's gonna have a picture of a dove yeah. on the front of it. But I'm not allowed to shoot doves because why? You know what's funny is the when we were out in Idaho, we were talking with the DNR there, and they they have a season on wolves and it's pretty much unlimited hunting like just go for it if you can I wasn't do it, around for that conversation yeah that's awesome yeah is they, it like coyotes here where you can use basically pretty much but the issue gun? is they're such a big issue and they're so good at being like yeah good luck they're so good at being invisible that people can't don't want to do it because it's so hard yeah. and so it, they're an issue and they're impossible to catch 
Great. Great. The perfect animal to let loose somewhere. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I didn't even think of it that way. Because they're so elusive. Yeah. The hunters just can't can't do it. It's not fun. So no one wants to get involved with trying to take care of the problem. Talk about like a man versus beast scenario, though. See yeah. into the gray. Doesn't end well. <laughs> Although is that the one where he tapes the glass to his hands? At the end that? of the movie, Jeff. Thank wow, you. Wow, no, wow, wow, wow. It was in the Liam trailer. Mason? Yeah, it's I not a bad seen movie. The movie. It was in the trailer. It. It's not a bad movie. Yeah. Yeah. The ending's a bit of a cliffhanger, which I hate. I tend to hate that. It's like taken, but in nature. <laughs> yeah. Kind yeah. Of. Yeah. Like pretty much every Liam Neeson movie is now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Trust is built in a day. It's built over time. The early hours and the late nights. It's built by doing the work and pushing the limits every day. Because the promises we make are the promises we were built to keep. If you'd like to help support the Greenway Outdoors, please like and comment on this podcast and subscribe to all of our channels. So I was in Texas over the weekend, and I managed to come across something that I found very odd. Maybe it's because I'm from Michigan or whatnot, but I was getting my hair cut. They call it soda down there? <laughs> no. <laughs> you think. You're getting your then, hair cut? Then they call me a Yankee, and I'm like, oh. Hmm, Did fine. they call you a Yankee? No, but oh. I have heard it a million times. Um, you have, like, the length of hair that, like, when you get a haircut, you expect us to notice. I know. No one does <laughs> because your hair is so long that it's like, I, I got two inches off. Now it only goes halfway down your back. Oh, <laughs> my God. You, guys you didn't, didn't notice. You guys didn't notice. <laughs> oh, sorry, Emu. I upset him. He's, um, he's trying to sleep. Yeah, he's <laughs> <Rude>. <laughs> So I'm signing into my into the board, and I look down, and there's a bottle of Dr. Pepper, and there's, like, this this stuff on the top. I'm like, what is that? This looks disgusting. And I look a little closer, and I realize this woman has a 20-ounce Dr. Pepper bottle. Like, 25% of it is peanuts floating on the top. Oh. And I – What? Like, like a garbage? No. I asked that because I'm like, what? I go, what's with the – Dr. Pepper and oh it's this thing that I do and it just makes it she does or they do like is it a thing down there I like no, peanuts and I, I like Dr. Pepper I, I but assume, I don't know that I want them together yeah I assume it's a it must be her because I've never seen it before I've but seen it I've seen it too I've seen it really I can't even tell you when where or how but I know that I've seen it it I like feel I can see it visually you're not thinking of boiled peanuts right no, that's that's is not it, that's so it, disgusting though. No, bo- yeah. bo- no, no, they no, are good. No. I love I it? love boiled peanuts. No, I hate them. <laughs> no, not for me. They're for they're me. as gummy as that bear's teeth. They're not uh, gummy. I just want to get rid of all the flavor. It, and I don't. Yeah, I just. You no. don't like them? No. Huh? You don't like boiled peanuts? I don't what? like. I don't like peanuts. Anything and I don't you like do you. <laughs> to the boiled peanut, you could just do to a regular peanut. No, or that's a roasted not true. Peanut and it would be just as good. What do you like about them? Wrong. Wrong. You boil it. Boiling it removes the flavor. Right. It's Plus disgusting. any water soluble benefits be that you could get. They are soft. Yeah, okay. I don't like it. But they're not gummy. They don't. They're it's not like, like you stuck a gummy worm in your mouth. They're I didn't just mean like, like that. I just noodles. Meant, I need no, reason. not like noodles. <laughs> I like Kyle's, my nuts to pop. Kyle's thinking. <laughs> of, <laughs> Kyle's thinking of circus peanuts. That's not the kind of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you like about them? There's nothing good about them. They're. I don't know. The the flavor is great in them. If you get the hot ones, the spicy ones are really good. So the flavor is only good because they add flavor back to it. So basically, even the original ones aren't too bad. It's kind of like you have to be okay with the texture. They're like the baked potato of peanuts. It's only what you do yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which. But it doesn't taste anything like a peanut. I don't like peanuts, regular peanuts. Okay. That's weird. Well, anyhow. I was thinking. Oh, I'm such a jerk. (laughs) (laughs) With it, I can see having Dr. Flavored, Dr. Pepper flavored peanuts. I can get on that, but I don't know if I want peanut flavored Dr. Pepper. I want. Wait, I want. What, I want to see. Did you get to see her drink it? Like is part, she chewing every other sip? Or? What part I, is I she consuming? The, I didn't see the consumption part. You see that get worked over in someone's mouth? That's but rough. I didn't know if she's like <laughs> marinating the peanuts in there for like later, or if she's or if she's marinating swig. the Dr Pepper every you know, swig. Yeah, yeah. Every you, swig you get two peanuts. or something. I mean, how many flavors oh. are in Dr Pepper? As it is. Yeah. What is it? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Yeah, Twenty-three. Now there's twenty-four. Uh, now wait a minute. So you're the only one that knows anything about this. Do you think it's just Dr Pepper? I didn't say I knew anything about it. I said I've seen it, and I couldn't tell you where. 
well, Texas has a thing with Dr. Pepper, so that's true. When I was there, I went to I was uh, I went with Pastor Matt to San Antonio on the Riverwalk, mm -hmm. and we're at, we're on the Riverwalk, and I'm walking through, and this is like, I mean, I'm right out of high school, and I didn't like Dr. Pepper at this time, so when I was there, I we went to a Mexican restaurant. And they're like, "What do you want to drink?" And I said, "I get a Coke." And they came back, and I took a sip, and it was Dr. Pepper. Now I discovered then that I now liked Dr. Pepper upon that time. Did you not like Dr. Pepper? Or did you choose that you didn't like Dr. Pepper? Don't get like into it. Don't, don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't get in my head. Don't get in my head. I don't like that. Get out of my head. <laughs> so I got it, and I was like, "Well, I ordered Coke," and Pastor Matt was like, "Yeah, this is why you got a Dr. Pepper." I was like, "Well, <laughs> no." You couldn't warn me. First? No, hey, no. <laughs> he goes, he goes here. Coke means what you call pop I hate that. and by ordering a pop they assume you want dr pepper i'm like how do you order coke it's like coca-cola i'm like that's shut up i'm, I'm not playing this i'm not game. playing so i drank dr pepper the rest of the trip by ordering coke just to prove a point it wasn't until we went to like a i i don't remember i it was like something like texas roadhouse or you know like something where you shouldn't go there but it was like super cliche because we have them here but we just ended up eating there might have been an outback, but it I should, ordered. It I ordered be a the epitome of it because it's the most. <laughs> you're in a Texas place in Texas that should be the most Texas. I ordered a Coke there, and they brought me an actual Coke. But everywhere else, it was just Dr Pepper when I was in San Antonio. So, for what it's worth, that's kind yeah, of how so they roll. At, at the end of the day, I think I would much prefer Dr Pepper flavored peanuts, not the. Vice well, I don't know. Oh, well, Dr Pepper owes you thing they got going. Maybe around. you drink the Dr oh, Pepper <laughs> down and then eat the nuts at the end. I wish Maybe I Maybe like chew I There's a stra there's a strategy I wish you would have inquired more on this. Does it, does it make it salty? Like what? I don't I, I don't know. I can't wrap my head around that. That sounds gross. Well, we got to try sure it. There's some we, we got to try it. Drink. Yep. Okay. <laughs> we should. We should do it. Let's let's test it and see what part's better, the drinking it or the eating it. We'll do it on the next podcast. I look forward to believing Ryan's you. not allowed to be the one to handle the No. The, no. The, no. <laughs> He'll be like, they're all boiled. <laughs> but you guys like them now. Yeah, right. You didn't even Joke's on you. It's not pop. It's motor oil. <laughs> <laughs> I would not even be surprised by that. Motor no. oil. Speaking of food in general, I've got to get our steaks on the grill here pretty soon, so we're going to wrap this up. But before we go, I've got one topic I wanted to hit on. We just released a video on our YouTube channel. It's called How to Dry Age a Duck. And as much as we joke around, this is, this is serious. Uh, looking into your soul this is important <laughs> whenever we go hunting and i say this in the beginning of that video whenever we go hunting everyone says the same thing anybody i've ever hunted with so if you've <laughs> i've hunted with you joker dessage this is for you uh <laughs> every time you get ducks people are like uh, when you're packing up the decoys i'm like do you want them they're like oh you can take them you can take them people are so eager to dump off their ducks and not be the ones to take them home not Scott and David, though. They were, like, pretty gung-ho and taking the meat. Yeah. But everyone else, they're like, oh, you can take them, especially geese, too. We just, just want to shoot them. Yeah, I hate that. I do, too. And oh, yeah, the worst is when they take the, the breasts and not the legs. It's like, you, yeah. You, it, you killed it. It's disrespectful. It. Yeah, it is Good disrespectful. Lord. And the leg meat some of the best part, yeah. especially if you know what you're doing. you got to cook it right. So because of this, I think a part of it isn't people being bad people. I think it's people not having knowledge on how to do it properly. And I looked up how to dry age a duck, and there was no video that I was impressed with that was out there that taught people the way that I think you should teach them. So a couple of things I want to note on. Number one, you can actually take ducks. If you have a walk-in refrigerator where you can keep the temperature between like 31 and 34 degrees, you don't even need to dry age the duck by breaking them down and cleaning them. You can hang them by their head, put them in there for a week, not even gut them, and just leave them in there for a week. Assuming you didn't shoot the guts, right? How would you know? But well, that's what Ted Nugent does, and that's what uh, the guy um, from Duck Dynasty does. That's like an old wives' tale. That's People do that. They're like, no, you just, you just I was, hang. You just I was hang. on board thinking like hang it like a deer, but I would think you'd at least remove the guts first. Nope, nope. These guys weren't removing the guts. Wow. Now, I'm not saying you can't remove the guts. Like they're, they're pretty easy to remove out of a duck. And if I was going to do it, I probably would remove the guts. Yeah. You would just you know cut around the, the vent, as they call it. Uh, feel the, around for the, the corkscrew pooper. and then pour everything, pull everything out. <laughs> they have a corkscrew um, dingus. Beep, but beep. Uh, anyhow, um, <laughs> it's long too, isn't it? Like some astronaut. Will you, will it's, you? Di it's different on each. Trust me, I've done my research on this. Have you? Yeah. Can you tell me how long? I think. I was going to have you look it up. It's the. We're talking about the dingus of the duck. It's the goo. 
The goo? No, no, the males. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. What's what's the name of the duck? There's a duck that its its penis is like the the a length and a half of its own body. And it like unravels. And it starts with goo. I think it starts with Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll try to look it up. I'll try to look. Okay, it up. you look that up while I talk about this. So anyhow, you could gut them, but they hang them by a string around their neck, and then they hang them inside of a cooler, and they'll leave them for like a week. And one of the things that I read online because I did so much research on this was they're like, yeah. I don't go out and even breast out the duck until the head falls off. The body falls off the head in there. Like they just leave it hang for like ten days, and when the fu- when the when it breaks grab, off grab and the head's still there and uh, the the body falls, you know it's done. I'm not recommending to do that, but imagine how <laughs> tender that meat would become. Me. Wow! So if you're looking for a clean, normal way, and you're not rich and you don't have a big walk-in cooler, and you have a wife that would murder you in the street for doing that, this is something you can do by just putting it in the refrigerator. Essentially what you're doing is you're taking off all the feathers of the duck, you're taking off the wings, you're cutting out the spine on both sides and pulling out the spine. And what that creates is a cavity. Something I left out in this video, it's been driving me nuts. I wish I would have put it in there. Didn't think of it at the time. And we're filming ages like, hurry up, I wanna eat dinner, get this over with. So uh, at the time I rushed through it, but I'm just kidding, it was a really good video. But something I wanted to add was, why do you have to dry age the duck whole? Why does the meat have to remain on the carcass? This is really important for deer too. The reason why you're just cutting out the spine and you're not touching the breast, you're leaving the meat attached, or you're just hanging the duck all in whole is because the meat is connected to the bone, the tissue, the cartilage, everything. It's all connected. So when when an animal goes through rigor mortis, basically the muscle tightens up as much as it possibly can. I like how confidently you said rigor mortis. Yeah, I just rolled right through. I'm Rick, like, I'm okay. yeah, I'm like, a, <laughs> I'm like a scientist over here. So when it t- that muscle tightens up, if it's connected to the bone still, then it will almost tear itself some. When it tries to tighten up, it's still pulled taut. It's still pulled taut. But it's trying to shrink. So it's trying to shrink. So it's like tearing itself. Hmm. However, if you just breast it out as soon as you get the duck, and you just pop, and you just tried to age it in the fridge it would tighten up upon itself and nothing would be holding it taut at the ends because the, it's not connected to the bone anymore. So it's crucial. That's why you really shouldn't, um, they say you shouldn't, if you have to like quarter out a deer or something in the field, you should at least wait until it gets into rigor mortis before you do it because otherwise you are mm-hmm. going to have one tough meat. Interesting. Um, and wow. you wouldn't even realize it until you get back and try to cook it or try to eat it, but you have to allow that muscle to go through that rigor mortis phase at a bare minimum. Sometimes that's difficult in super hot weather, but at a minimum you have to do that. So getting back to the duck. Did you get the penis thing? Yeah, I did. It's the Argentine lake duck. It has a penis that is nearly half a meter long. Half a meter. It's a South American stiff-tailed duck. It is also, uh. it's also <laughs> <laughs> Giggity. <laughs> it is also called the Argentine blue gl- bluebill. Also known as the goo magoo. No? But no, all no goo anything. No, no. But huh. duck penises Dang. in general, they they're barbed at the end and they're like corkscrew shaped. So when they go in, they can hold on. It's actually messed up how ducks reproduce too. It's not you know how that people are like oh they mate for life. Mm-hmm. Actually, what happens? Cover your kids' ears. Is a group of males surround a, a female. Affair. They hold her down. They take turns mating with her, and then whoever's like, yeah, I was probably the guy that got the deal done, stays with her. Until she has the babies and he helps feed and take care of the nest and everything like that and sit on it and they go back and forth and they go through it. Once the babies are born, she gets annoyed with him pretty quick, tries to kill him, so he leaves, and then she takes care of the babies herself. That is the mating for life that you hear about with these ducks. That is that is a that is a day in the life of. Um, that's how, <laughs> yeah. I, I know where the gooey, go- so, whatever the go sound came from when I was talking about the penises and or yeah. whatever. <laughs> it was these things. The Pacific Geoduck. Yeah. The Pacific Geoduck. Because, I mean, look at them. <laughs> it's like, it's a, like an eel. It's like an ocean wang. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Can you eat them? Yeah, I think so. I, 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 people farm them. It's a kind yeah. of duck. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> flies, it's flies. how you'd imagine like uh, a Claire would be. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you left you it get in it? the ocean. You get it, AJ? You get it? Oh, we got it. Oh, okay, good. It's disgusting. Anyhow, getting back to the duck. So the meat has to be pulled taut in order to break down properly. So by feathering out the duck, um, burning off all the hairs, 
and leaving it looking like a little rotisserie chicken with the spine cut out, you put it where the spine was, you put that face down on a rack and you put that in your refrigerator for a week. Now the process, what's taking place is the meat is breaking down, but it's remaining pulled taut. Therefore, it's really, really, really tenderizing it because it's being stretched. The fibers are being broken. As those fibers are being broken, it releases blood. Now the blood, imagine the blood is what picks up that pond scum flavored yeah. thing that ducks, mm -hmm. ducks are in ponds and in just disgusting setting, muddy, Swamps. swampy. That sits, that flavor sits in the blood. So by allowing the dry aging process to take place, the muscle fibers break down, the blood is released, and what's left is gold. It's a completely different meat than if you don't dry age it. I've mm -hmm. taken breasts out of mallards, thrown them on the grill, especially at his house, and you're like, gnawing on it. It's like, why'd I let him cook? I'm just kidding. Jeff's the best cook here. <laughs> yeah, um, he is. But, uh, Enjoy the next set of recipes. <laughs> <laughs> he like booby traps us. He's like, the last one you made me use fish oil or fish sauce and, in it. Though. And orange oil. oil it ended oil. up actually being pretty good, though. But I just didn't like oh, the, the basically catfish pad thai. Yeah. 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 That's good. I wouldn't, I, I'd really tread lightly on the whole pad thai part of it. But um, it's, it's Thai food. Yeah. Anyhow. When you put it in there for a week, you're releasing all that blood. You're you're allowing the fibers to break down, and then you take that meat and then you cook that with the fat on. Oh, oh. There's a few recipes on our website. You can go to thegreenwayoutdoors.com and check them out and see how to cook the duck once you do that. But that dry aging process is so necessary. So go to our YouTube channel, go to our Instagram, Facebook. You'll find it there. Go there, please watch it. How to dry age a duck? I swear to you, it's the best tutorial you're gonna find. It makes it super simple and one other note, they look like hell when you first do it. Like when you first go through this process and you're like singeing off everything, they look really rough. You put them in the refrigerator and like a day later, they look like a completely different thing. Like all the bruising and stuff that's on the fat and all that just disappears. And yeah. then they look like this perfect little rotisserie chicken. Absolutely gorgeous. So Tastes amazing. And that's a great way to do it with just a refrigerator and a little rack that you can put in there as opposed to like – you know, having to buy a big walk-in cooler and stuff like that, too. So it's a little bit better. So this episode, as all of our podcast episodes, are brought to you by Ram Trucks, who, I mean, you see it in all of our shows. We've been very dedicated Ram. They've been our sponsor for over three years now. Mm -hmm. And they are just the best truck. We all drive them. They're fantastic. And right now, they're running a lot of specials. So go check out Ram Trucks. I'd also like to thank Bass Pro and Cabela's. Um, just the best store. You know, no, you go to Bass Pro, buy your stuff there. Mm -hmm. And that's where and we went. Good people to work with, too, on the business side of things. Amazing people. And if you saw our last episode, episode 62, it's called Tracker Boats, who we work with as well. And we talked about the Bass Pro family. We talked about the Tracker Boat family. The people there radiating from the top, the leadership there, just good, Christian, kind individuals. When I walk in and buy something from Bass Pro, I feel good inside knowing that the people that were helping keep jobs are just wonderful, amazing, godly, Christian, amazing, conservative, great people. So go to Bass Pro, check it out. Also, we have a discount code for OnX Hunt. So the app that we use when we're going around all over the place and we need to know where we stand. That's actually their phrase, which <laughs> makes a hell of a lot of sense. But knowing where you stand, are you on public pri property? Are you on private property? Are you trying to figure out where you're going to hunt? Use this, download the map to your phone. So if you don't have service, because we never do, you can still see where you are on the map. It's incredible. Well, Onyx you, Hunt. You can see elk migrations. You can see they map. You can zoom in on the elk. You can, you can watch them walk. Anything you can <laughs> yeah. do. Can't do that. But <laughs> check that out. Also, the discount code for that is going to be in our bio or in the description, depending on where you're watching this at. In addition, Wilderness Athlete. That is the supplements that we take, the protein shakes that we take. The hydrate packets are now our new favorite. AJ, you said you're obsessed with yeah, them. We need the, to order the lemons one pretty gnarly. Yeah, I had the watermelon. Oh, I haven't had that one yet. The hydrate and recover, I hit them because oh. Ryan gets into everything. <laughs> they also have a really great uh, pre-workout that is that doesn't have caffeine in it, which I like. The pill one. Because it doesn't make you jittery, and you know, but it still gives you the boost you need to get through your workout. I've been really impressed with their stuff. Yeah. So Wilderness Athlete, check that out. That link is also in our bio so that you can get 20, I believe it's 20% off of that mm -hmm. as well. So those discount codes are in there. Weatherby Guns, the only gun that we shoot. Weatherby Arms, amazing company. Another good Christian conservative, awesome company, good people to work with. Check them out as well. 
Thank you so much for tuning in to the Green Bay Outdoors podcast. We are here every single week. If you are listening to this podcast, you've missed out on some things, especially Inu attacking his own leg. Inu is Japanese for dog, and that is our, <laughs> our office dog who's awesome. We got to go cook some steaks, but check us out on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, our website, thegreenwayoutdoors.com. Thanks so much. Stay green. Hey.